Hi everybody and welcome to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. In this video we begin with an interesting story from the subreddit Relationship Advice with an uplifting update. Then we move on to a really cool malicious compliance and finish up with some petty revenge. So if you want to move around within the parts of the video just use the timestamps right below it. Now let's get started with the first story. This post is from the subreddit Relationship Advice and it's by user throwarray angle 3083 Very cute guy, 30? Who works at City Recycling Center used address from Amazon Box to return my grandmother's ring. I want to ask him to coffee. Sister says this is how dumb girls disappear. There's a lot of backstory here, but I have a ring that was my grandmother's engagement ring from her high school sweetheart who was killed in Korea before they got married. She says I was the only person she ever told the story to out of respect for my grandpa, but she still treasured the ring and the boyfriend's memory and she wanted me to have it. About a month ago I just lost the ring, as in it was on my bathroom counter one minute and then it was gone. I tore my house apart with no sign and was super depressed and figured it must have gone down the sink or I vacuumed it or something. Well this past week I get a knock on my door which literally never happens anymore. The guy was very nervous and very nice and really cute too. And he asked if I was OP and I said yes. He said he didn't really know how appropriate this was but he was a supervising civil engineer at our recycling center. And about a month ago one of the sorters found a ring in an Amazon box and gave him the box and the ring. He said he tried to contact me via phone and social media for a couple of weeks. I deleted all of it due to a bad breakup. I thought about mailing the ring but didn't want it to get lost. So after thinking about it for a week he decided to hand deliver it to the address on the box and hoped it worked. I immediately burst into tears when I saw the ring and I only got his first name. I think I told him thank you and I think he said that it made him very happy his plan worked and he would let me have my moment and left. I cried for a good hour just staring at the ring amazed at how lucky I was. I started to feel bad, I blew the guy off so I did some social media sleuthing and found his Instagram. I created a new account and sent him a message thanking him. He has not responded so I don't think he's very active. I found out where he works and want to surprise him and ask him for dinner or coffee or drinks as a way of saying thank you. Yes in my heart I'm thinking this is how great romance stories start but my brain really is thankful he went through all the trouble. When I told my sister about my plan she absolutely said I was being an idiot. She said it was nice the guy returned the ring but his behavior is so suspicious. She said I have no idea who this guy is. All we know is that he stalked my address from an Amazon box which is probably massively against the rules of his job. She says instead of being a great romance it's how dumb girls end up dead in a ditch. What do you guys think about this? Well OP I think what he did was a good thing. I'm not so sure if he had evil or bad intentions but your sister also does have a point. There are creeps out there. But I still understand your conflict, so maybe you can do something that's kinda like in the middle. You can still thank him for what he's done, but do it in a safe way. You already know where he works, so maybe you wanna send him an email or give him a call to his place of work and see if it's not weird that you would do that and take him out somewhere that's very very public. Maybe your sister or a brother if you have one or a cousin, anyone can go with you as well to thank him for what he's done for the family. He doesn't need to know the whole backstory where the ring is from but just know that it's a grandmother's ring that is being returned to the owner and has a lot of emotional value. And what do you guys think? What would you suggest OP should do? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what kind of advice they gave OP. Murderous Budgie says I mean at this point he already knows where you live. If he's a serial killer you're kinda effed whether you ask him out or not. Just don't make the mistake of thinking this is some great romance because you had a meet cute. Maybe he's a good guy, maybe he's not. Or maybe he is a good guy but not right for you. Or maybe he's married, has a long term girlfriend, maybe he's gay. You know nothing about him. That doesn't mean you can't try to get to know him but don't pin all your hopes on it. 
Snarchin Darchin says, it would never work. He works in recycling, and you're the kind of person who doesn't break down card boxes before recycling. Bigoter Fan says, 1. I think your sister is a bit paranoid. 2. I wouldn't recommend calling or showing up at his place of work to ask for a date. You already sent him a message on his social media and you know it's the right one because he reached out first when trying to find you. I would just wait for him to respond. If he doesn't ever respond, that is also a response. Just give it time. 3. If you're more focused on the show my gratitude side than the dating side, just send a beer basket or something with a short note like, thanks for helping reunite me with my ring. Well, I guess I totally glazed over the rom-com romantic meet cute kind of part of this story and was just focused on how OP could say thanks without getting in any trouble or anything like that. But the community helped me out on that one and really addressed the topic. And I think OP got some pretty sensible advice from the community. So how about we move on to the update and see what ended up happening? One of the most common questions from the last post was how did the ring end up in the box? I honestly don't know. The ring was on my bathroom counter because I take it off to wash my face and to me it just disappeared. The Amazon box was the one that my face wash comes in but I swear I had put it in the bin before I washed my face that night. I really just don't know. Anyway, on to the update. So the top few comments said that I should do something nice for everyone at the center because he didn't find the ring, he just returned it. And if there was romantic interest there, it would work itself out. I decided to do this and called the center and asked if I could bring them coffee and bagels one morning. The lady was very nice and said of course, but wanted to know why. I didn't want to get anyone in trouble, so I said, a few of your employees did something very nice for me and I just want to say thanks. So then she said something like, oh, I know who you are. Which I took to mean that maybe this guy had been talking about me and my heart jumped. She told me how I could do it. So Friday morning, I got four baker's dozen, cream cheese and coffees and brought it down. They were very thankful, but sadly, the guy who brought my ring wasn't there. The lady who I had spoken to on the phone was like this sweet grandmotherly type and she said she insisted I give her my number so the supervisor could call and thank me. I kinda got the idea that she was up to something but couldn't put my finger on it. I left thinking that I'd done a nice thing to repay a nice thing and maybe I might see the guy again, but if not at least I tried. So later in the afternoon I got a text saying it was Brian, the guy. And he remembered me from the ring and said I made his office and sorters very happy with the bagels. My heart jumped through my throat, I was so excited. We texted back and forth and I explained why the ring meant so much to me. He explained that the ladies in his office are always trying to set him up on dates and was sorry if they embarrassed me. I said no way and told him I would love to buy him dinner to thank him specifically. He said he would be happy to. We agreed to meet for an early dinner between our works. Literally hit it off immediately. He's so cute and funny but shy at the same time. As we were talking, my dumb overly romantic brain couldn't help but think I had this ring from a family secret my grandma had given me. That fate must have made me lose it just so this perfect guy could find it and come into my life. Yes, I am a very dorky romantic like that. Probably why my sister was telling me to be careful. He checks all my boxes. He's the fun uncle, so I know he's good with kids. He's got a master's degree, so I know he's smart. He's in the Marines part time. He's athletic. He's handsome and was so kind and polite to all our serving staff. Such a big one for me. He didn't fuzz over me paying for dinner and he wasn't overly forward when we said goodbye. Because honestly, I would have gone home with him had he asked. The one thing that gives me pause is that he's 31 and I'm 23. And always was pretty critical of people who have significant age differences and 8 years is a lot. We texted all day Saturday and I would have gone out with him again but he had plans. He asked if I wanted to do something on Sunday. 
So yesterday we spent the day with him teaching me how to do stand up paddle boarding. It was so fun and seeing him without a shirt and muscles flexing while paddling, ovaries were on fire. After we were done, he asked me if I wanted to get takeout and come to his house to watch a football game. I said yes of course but wanted to shower. He said I could shower at his place. I said I wanted to get clean clothes and he said if I was comfortable with it, I could wear one of his hoodies and pajama pants. And I was like, oh my god, buddy, you just opened the door I'm not sure you're ready for. And yes, I'll steal your best hoodie on the second date. We ended up talking through the entire game. I kept thinking he would try something, but he was so shy and so sweet the entire time. I did tell him that I had to kiss him on the cheek as I was leaving because he had shown me such a great time. I think that relieved a lot of pressure because I could tell you wanted to, but wasn't sure how to go about it. We agreed to get in touch to hang out later this week, and I spent the night in my bed cuddling with his hoodie, thinking really stupid things like if I should hyphenate my last name and what we'll name our kids. Yes, I'm a real dork like that, but I really like this guy. Well OP, congratulations I guess. You met an apparently nice guy that you really really like but you only have reservations regarding the age gap. I would say that in this time in your life that you are 23, apparently you're independent because you live alone and you have a job and all of that stuff so you're your own person and he's 31, I think the age gap doesn't play a big role here. Personally, I'm 7 years older than my wife and I think our relationship is awesome. There's only two things I'd like to add regarding the boxes that he's checked. The fact that he's the cool uncle or he says he's the cool uncle doesn't necessarily mean that he's great with kids. And the fact that he's got a master's degree doesn't necessarily mean he's smart. But apart from that, I'll just say all the best to the both of you OP. And on that note, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user j 3 erc guy 45 I think that's meant to be read JerseyGuy45. Anyways. Sure, I'll take down my negative Yelp review. This happened to me a few years ago. I was owed a significant sum of money by the company which handles my doctor's billing. She worked at a large healthcare system that outsourced billing to this company. For months and months, I tried via email and phone to get my money back, but with each contact I was treated rudely or ignored. They would either say they were still working on it or would act like I never requested the money in the first place and needed to start the process over. It was maddening. One day after receiving another rude email from this company, I decided to leave a Yelp review on my doctor's page. I essentially said that while the doctor and her staff were helpful and professional, the billing company they used was atrocious and made the entire experience not worth it. Lo and behold, the very next day I get a call from the CEO of the billing company. He asks what the problem is and I explain. He says, Okay, I'll make sure the money gets sent as soon as possible. Could you please take down the review? Apparently, he was getting angry calls from my doctor and he seemed pretty pressured to get it taken down. I respond that I can take the review down after I get my money back. He gladly accepts my offer. A week later, there is my check in the mail. Here's the thing though, I never specified how long until I would take the review down after I get the money. So I wait a week, get some calls and texts from the CEO, ignore them, wait another week, respond that I'm having technical problems logging into Yelp but should have it resolved soon. After about 6 months of him reaching out and me being as unhelpful as possible, I finally took it down. The next time I returned to that doctor's office, it was a whole new billing system. Not sure if my review made a difference, but it was sweet malicious compliance regardless. Opie's edit. I went back to review my correspondence with the billing company. It made me realize the whole situation was even more screwed up than I had originally described here. The reason they owed me money was because at first my insurance had told me they were not going to cover the appointments because the doctor was not in network. However, I had found the doctor through my insurance website. When I went back to check, the doctor's name was no longer listed on their website. 
Luckily for me, I had taken a screenshot at the time so I could have the phone number for the doctor on hand. After I sent the insurance company the screenshot, they agreed to cover the appointments. They paid the billing company, yet the billing company refused to refund me the money I had paid. So essentially, they were collecting from both myself and the insurance company and trying to get away with it. American healthcare in a nutshell, lol. Also, when I told my wife about this post, she told me I'd need to make a correction. The CEO sent me a check within four days. It was not even an entire week, after months and months of reaching out. Nice OP, that is some great malicious compliance. You paid with the exact same coin. They didn't care much about helping you until they had a little bit of pressure. Good job OP. Now, let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Petty Revenge and it's by user My Cat Sits Like People. Entitled kid can't eat my cookie anymore. Years ago, I used to nanny an entitled kid, nine female. This was in New York City, and while she didn't seem like an entitled kid at first, over time, she was the epitome of the term. My job was to pick her up from school and watch her until her parents came home at dinner time. Every day, on the way home, we'd stop off at a cookie shop to buy a warm cookie each. In the beginning, I'd get a chocolate chip cookie or similar, eat half and give her the other half, just to be kind. As time went on, she got brattier and snottier, and I could barely stand to be around her. She was really leaning hard into her tweens, exacerbated by growing up as a city kid. Eventually, I started getting a peanut butter cookie at the shop. What makes this petty revenge? Little Miss Attitude was supposedly allergic to peanuts. And while eating a cookie in front of her was safe and wouldn't trigger a reaction, she definitely wasn't allowed to eat it herself. To be honest, I always thought her entitled mom was making it up for sympathy. Those city moms were always making a competition out of everything. Even stuff like, whose kid has the worst allergy? I don't dislike peanut butter cookies, but they're not my favorite. That being said, those peanut butter cookies were pretty damn good when I no longer had to share them. When she turned 11, her parents got her a cell phone. I literally quit the next day because she became intolerable. I was not getting paid enough to put up with her. I'm just glad this was before TikTok and influencers became a thing. Ah, uh, OP, I totally get you. It's the little things. Those teeny tiny petty little things that just make us feel better. Haha, <laughs> good job OP. Thanks for sharing. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I certainly did reading them to you. So if you did, then go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become a member of our Discord community that just keeps growing and it is fantastic. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the relevant links are in the video description below. So be sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content, so thank you once again. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.